Oh, camera, whiteboard, math counts mini. All right, look, I'm gonna have to go fast because I'm in a race. I'm pretty far ahead though, so we've got some time. This race, it's such a cool race, Math Counts even wrote a sprint round problem about it in the 2009 state competition. But before we get to the problem, I'd like you to check out my threads right here. See, I did so well on the first Math Counts Mini that Math Counts sent me this t-shirt. Um, I'm not really sure what they were trying to tell me, but I'm really glad they sent it because that's one extra day before I have to do my laundry. And that's where you come in, right here, address. If you have a Math Counts Team t-shirt, send it to me and I'll make your Math Counts Team famous. Here's the address, Art of Problem Solving, P.O. Box 2185, Alpine, California, 91903. And if you keep sending me t-shirts, I'll never have to do my laundry. See that size? Uh, large. Send me large. Don't send me a white t-shirt because I'll blend into the board. There's the address. All right, now ready? Let's do some math. Got to get rid of this, and I'll tell you about Tell you about our race. I'm still pretty far ahead, so we've got time. In our race, there are three of us. One, two, three. Three of us in a race, and we are trying to get to the finish line. And we want to count the number of different ways we can finish. Well, it seems like that's pretty easy, right? Well, there are three of us here. Three of us. So we have three choices for who comes in first, and then there are two left to choose from for who comes in second, and then just one left to come in last. So you think it would just be three times two times one, six ways to figure out how we could finish. But here's the problem. We might tie. We're allowed to tie here, so we could have these two tie for first, and this guy come in last, or we could have all three of us tie for first. The ties make things a lot more complicated. Nobody likes ties. But this is the problem. We have to count the number of ways, number of possible ways the three could finish, given that we're allowed to have ties. Hmm. Well, there's no simple three times two times one way to do this problem. How are we going to do this? Well, if you watched the last Math Counts Mini, you know what to do. Get organized. We'll come up with some casework here. Make sure we count everything once and only once. All right, let's see, how are we gonna do this? Well, we might have just one person come in first, two people come in first, or a three-way tie. Let's try that as our cases. So here we go. Number in first, and then the total number of ways. So we could have just one person in first. So let's look at that. If we have just one person in first, well, first we have to choose who comes in first. We have three people to choose from. So we have three ways to pick the first place person. Now we have two people left. Well, there are three different things that could happen. They could finish blue and then green, green and then blue, or they could be tied. So no matter who we pick to come in first, there are three ways to figure out what happens after that. So we have three times three ways for us to finish the race if there's only one person in first. Now let's look at what happens if there are two people, two people in first. So first we have to choose, well, we choose one of these three people to not be in first. I hope it's not me. So we have three ways to choose who comes in last. And then no matter who we choose, the other two people have to be tied for first. So there are three ways to choose who comes in last. The other two are tied for first, so there are three ways for us to finish when two of us are tied for first place. And then, well, the last possibility is all three of us tie for first. And there's only one way to do that. So we have three times three is nine, plus three is 12, plus one is 13, and we're finished. Oh, I'm, I'm still pretty, pretty far ahead, so let's do this problem one more time. We'll do it a little bit different way, because if you do the same counting problem two completely different ways, and you get the same answer, well, then you know you're right. Or, well, or you made the same mistake two different ways. But that would never happen to us. So we're gonna do this problem again. We're gonna do it in a slightly different way. All right, here's, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this by the number of people tied. We're gonna organize our cases this way. So we already saw what happens if there's no one tied. If there's no one tied, we have three people. We have three ways to choose who comes in first. And there are two left. 
to choose from, two ways to choose who comes in second, and then the last person's last. Three times two times one, we know that that is six ways for us to finish if no two of us are tied. But what happens if two of us are tied? Well, first, we have the three people. We have to choose one of the three people to not be tied. And then we take these other two people, and these other two people are indeed tied. So we have three ways to choose the person who's all by themselves. And then once we've chosen someone to be all by themselves, well, we have two choices. That person could either be in last, or they could be in first. So we have two choices for how they'll finish once we've chosen who's going to be all by themselves. So for each of the three ways somebody's going to be by themselves, there are two ways for us to finish. And then, well, if all three of us are tied, there's just one thing we can do. We can all come in first. So let's see, three times two times one is six, plus three times two, that's another six, that's 12, plus one is 13. Got 13 here, we got 13 there, and our answers are tied. So this is one time a tie is good, but I want to win, so I have to go. Wrong way.